Hello, welcome. So, episode number 12. Um, and as you can see here, and if you watch the sort of interim episode uh, 11.5, you'll see that we have got this uh, the non volatile class building now. Uh, if you've not seen that episode, um, don't care or whatever, uh, just a couple of changes. It's all pushed up uh, to GitHub. So if you pull in that, uh, pull the 11.5 uh, commit down. Um, I've started adding in some code comments. Um, I've not done them all yet, but I'll do that between episodes um, because it takes up quite a lot of space on the screen. So I'd rather do it after we've written it, talked about it and, and done all that sort of thing uh, and got it tested. And then hopefully by the time you then come to put, pull the the tree down, um, it's got comments in. So, you know, you don't have to keep referring back to the videos or whatever. Um, there was one typo, uh, 10 out of 10, to anyone who spotted it. Uh, a couple of these uh, were type name lowercase t, so it didn't build. Um, so I changed those to uppercase t uh, to fix that uh, build issue. Um, one change to the CMake list, uh, because we don't actually have a source file in here, it's header only, um, just comment out We'll put an underscore or delete the cmake lists dot text. I've left it in uh, just in case we do decide to put a source file in here. Um, but if you just stick an underscore or rename it or something like that, so it's not cmake lists dot text, uh, then it will get ignored. And then uh, in Wi-Fi, we've included it. Um, which unfortunately you've got to do by relative path like this, so dot dot slash to drop you back a level uh, into the application folder. And then we want to go into NVS32 and then NVS32.h. So that's a bit janky. I don't like it. I'm going to see if I can do it properly in the CMake lists. And then Wi-Fi is going to have a static instance of um, an NVS object. So as declared there, there's nothing to do in the constructor, um, the main constructor, because we will default initialize uh, NVS. So if we remember the default initialize here, um, because this is a, a got a default parameter, we'll just use the basic NVS partition. So that's absolutely fine. And then, of course, because it's static, we have to put the declaration up here. And there's, there's the um, sorry, the definition up here. And then there's the default initialize, taking no parameters. Um, so how, how are we going to test this? Um, so we've got our Wi-Fi class. We've got SNTP. They are both fine. Um, what we'll do is we'll just throw in some code at the moment just to test it and make sure we can read and write and then that code will get deleted. Um, so quite simply, where shall we put this? Let's stick it in in it. Uh, no. Let's put it. Let's put it at the start here. So I'm just going to make it very obvious that this is temporary code by putting in a, a ton of carriage returns here. Um, so let us do ESP error type underscore status so it doesn't mess with this because I don't really care I'm just using this as somewhere to put put the code uh, and let's do nvs dot in it like that and that's all we need to call isn't it oh no it's open there is no in it oh no there isn't in it 
Oh, and then it calls open. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. So yeah, okay, that that's fine. So let's do ESP loggy, uh, and let's do const uh, const expr static const char star, and let's do nvs tag nv oops nvs copy and paste that down init uh, nvs in fact we don't even need to put nvs there we go um, and then let's do percent s to do a string c string and esp error to name status okay and let's just do that for the time being um we need to set the port because we've likely changed it I think we're on six. Find out soon enough. And we'll see if we can see that in the log. Okay, so that's building, which is good. Uh, and then let's build flash and monitor. It'd be nice if there was just a flash and monitor, but I suppose you can click each one individually or set up your own compile commands or whatever. Connecting, uploading. Yeah, see that's changed a bit, some of this. Yeah, so they, they have updated stuff. So here we go. And hopefully you can see that. NVS in it. Uh, and then NVS ESP OK, which is that line. So when we called NVS in it, which calls open with our partition name, which we've defaulted to NVS, um, which if you remember, when we look at the partition table is this partition here. If we wanted a different partition, we would add it in the table and whatever name it is there, we would use that. Um, so open called nvs open which is the api uh, with that partition name in read write mode and then we passed a handle um, as the output so that's working so far which is good so let's actually write some data uh, and let's work out what data we're going to use so const expert static const char star uh, and let's just call it data for want of a better thing hello world okay so that's the data we are going to write uh, does wi-fi have c string yes it does so what we're going to do is Uh, let's make a temporary variable to hold what we read back. Um, so we can do this on the stack. 
Yes, we can. Uh, so let's do a char star um, in NVS. Default initialize it, and this will be uh, string len data plus one for the null terminator. So this will be defaulted as empty to start with. So the first thing we want to do is read what is in the NVS at some key that we will set to uh, let's call it Wi-Fi. So key and data and then what do we need to call? We need to call get uh, no, we need to call get buffer. Okay, so nvs dot get buffer, uh, and we want to pass it the key. We want to pass it the output. So in nvs, the output pointer, uh, and the size will be string and data plus one so let's just do make that a variable and then this can just be length and then len Uh, and then we can do status equals and then let's put in some debug uh, oh come on VS code oops having a moment there we go uh, getting key Send s and then let's just stick that in quotes and then do key uh, and then let's do copy and paste that down for the error and then if ESP OK equals status uh, then we can print out what's in the buffer buffer send s and then in nvs there we go okay so some some variables here some dummy data and the key so first of all we print to the log getting key and then in quotes whatever the key is which in this case is wi-fi then we get the buffer then we print out the, the status. Ooh. So that needs an underscore on it. Oh, why? It only does this when I'm recording. There we go. I'll just do one or two there. Uh, let's just check I'm doing status correctly. Yeah. So status, so then we print out the status, and if the status was good, we'll also print out the buffer. That looks reasonable. And what we're expecting, actually, is an error here. Um, key not found or something. I forget what the actual... Uh, ba -ba -ba. Might be invalid name. No, might be not found. Uh, why didn't it like that? Because 
that's const and it's an output. Good point. Uh, so let's do len in. len in and then let's make this len out there we go because this gets modified uh, if there are fewer uh, characters in there and actually we can be clever with our printf here just got to remember what you do is it dot star yeah percent dot star uh, and then what we can do is put in a len out here so it'll print out that number of characters from there In MVS. Oh, because I've just changed this, haven't I? Let's try that again. While it's building, let's just try and make this a little bit more readable. Oh, yeah, that's a a little bit better. Um, wasn't it like now? Oh, can you not do printf like things with ESP loggy? Okay, well, there goes that idea. So if this buffer <laughs> overruns, there's an issue, but uh, yeah. So what I mean by that is we're asking to get uh, hello world plus the null terminator back and we're reading that and we're reading it into this buffer. But if the last character is not null, then it's going to think that this string is that chunk of memory and then further until it finds a null um which is bad oh god it's still not going what, what are we doing wrong here uh scroll to the top of this error percent s oh because i'm an idiot it's not of type char star, it's of type char array, yeah. The number of times I make that typo. So what are we testing here while well, it's building? So first of all, in NVS is a, well it's a char array, so it's a char star. But we don't have in here anything that takes a char star. We've got a, a get buffer, sorry because we've got a template so what the compiler does is it see it looks for anyone who's calling this and goes ah you're calling this with a char star so i am going to copy and paste this code and replace t uh, with char which means that that might not work because we're Double starring it. Ha. Huh. Had not thought of that. 
Well, I'm pretty sure that that's not going to work. Now I've seen that. Well, let's try it, but I'm not happy with that. So even if it does work, we need to go, go through and change that. Trying to avoid using type traits, that's the main thing. Fact. No, it might it might actually work. Yeah, it did work. Oh, that first error was just Windows having a fit. Um, so where is the... Here we go. NVS in it, ESP OK, that's what we expect. Getting key Wi-Fi, not found. OK, well that's largely what we expect. So, what we'll do here then is else if... Um, and we can just copy that equals equals status. So if it's not found, what we're going to do is we'll write to it. Um, so let's copy that in and we're setting key to s to data yeah and then we'll do again because we've used a really sensible interface here we can just do that uh, and then change that to data and it will work out that it's a char star and all, all that sort of thing um, len that becomes len in and then we can just print out that so key data length key data length that looks sensible it's keeping track of the handle all internally so we don't have to worry about that in our code so let's give that a build and what we expect to happen is exactly the same as what we just saw. Um, so it will say not found because it's not written it yet. Then this branch will execute. Um, we'll then say setting key Wi-Fi to hello world. And hopefully then followed by an ESP OK. And then it will carry on with the rest of the project. Then when I hit reboot, and I'll use the button on the actual ESP itself, it'll go down, do the same thing, but this time it'll execute this branch, and it'll say buffer, and then hopefully in quotes, ESP OK, and that's what we read from the, and then it won't execute this. Um, so let us have a quick look. Uh, so in instantiation of static blah 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 uh, required from error invalid conversion from size t star to size t Oh. Why did I think that took a reference, a pointer? Uh, yeah, and of course, behind the scenes, it's going to do a verify on this as well.
So actually we don't need this end bytes at all. So we can actually get rid of that. Which tidies that up a little bit. So reminder, we're expecting getting key, not found, and then setting key, and then I'll bash the two buttons on the ESP until I find the one that's reboot. Okay, so In it, ESP, getting key, Wi-Fi, ESP, okay, buffer contains hello world. Ah, did this randomly reboot up here? And why did it reboot? I got a feeling something went wrong with the monitor. Um, ah, here we go. Getting key Wi-Fi, not found. And then another thread takes over. So where did it actually write that? Why did this not get output? That's really interesting. Huh. Well, the buffer now contains Hello World, at least. So that is something. And if I reboot... Is it that one? Yeah, it is. Buffer contains hello world. Okay, so let's do something a little bit more intelligent then. Um, let's stick a number in here and show that we can actually write something that's a, a, a single item. Um, so we'll write a, let's do a size T, which should be a 32-bit unsigned integer. Uh, and let's call it counter. And let's say counter is equal to zero. Uh, and then let's make the key counter. So we can get rid of that. And we can get rid of that. The size is one, because it's one item. Okay. Uh, getting key, so getting key counter. Uh, and then we are going to pass it the counter and len out. So if the counter already exists in the non-volatile, it'll overwrite whatever this is with the one that's in the non-volatile. And then in this case, if ESP OK is status, so we got it, uh, then counter Let's just get rid of these quotes, it's ugly. Uh, and we'll do percent %u counter. And then what we'll do, we'll be clever here. We'll set the buffer. Uh, 
The get only takes two parameters, doesn't it? Yeah, key and input. Yeah, so we don't need that for a single single item. So we'll set the buffer to counter plus plus. So it will increment the counter first and then set the buffer to that value. Uh, whereas if it's not found, we'll do setting key blah to percent u, where that is the counter. And that is counter. Okay, so on the first loop, because it's not going to find it, because the key counter doesn't exist in the non-volatile, uh, it'll be it's error not found. Uh, then it will set it to whatever we've initialized it to be, which is zero in this case, and get failed, so it won't have changed that number. Then we'll reboot, it'll get it, it'll print out zero, uh, and then it will go, ah, okay, well I got it, so I'm going to first of all print out zero, increment it, and then save it back. So it will now be one, and then each time we reboot, that counter should increment. So let's see if that works. And then we'll we'll do one final proof that it is actually non-volatile. Oh, uh, mismatch type. Oh, because we're not setting a buffer, are we? Yeah, it's just set. Get, set, set. I remember the set is calling verify um, behind the scenes as well, so we're implicitly uh, testing that function or that method, um, and it's returning the status of that as well. So if we were doing some more thorough testing, we'd actually break that to make sure that 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 works okay uh mismatch types because i've still got a set buff somewhere where is it Oh, because length is completely irrelevant. Um, set, set, get. Right. The one in unused variable, right? It's not that one. Uh, get. Key, set key, get key. Ah, because we're passing that in by reference, we need to take the address of it. And these should be by reference as well.
and then take the address of it because the buffer requires an address of length one. There we go, glad we did this. It's nice that there are uh, compile time errors and it's not starting to randomly write memory we shouldn't do, shouldn't have access to. We're getting there. Oh, still not happy. Uh, what do we got this time? Ah, oh, yeah, because that's passed in. Okay, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, get buff, we're asking for one byte, but here, one is a const, because uh, it's, because I've hard-coded one in there. Um, whereas if we actually go down to get buff, it's passing it in non comps but by reference. Now, we could do an implementation of this for what's called an RVAL reference, but I think it would probably make more sense. So just do that. I know that looks a bit rubbish. Now let's check the set and verify. Yeah, they're both comps, so they're not an issue. So effectively what we're doing here then is we know the length is one because it we're just getting one item. Um, so we're creating on the stack a length variable, setting it to one and then passing that in. Now, if it reads zero, this is going to change, but we're not returning that. We just don't care about it because we're going to get an error message if it didn't read it. Um, so this just gets thrown away. Uh, which is probably less overhead than having a second implementation of get buff that takes an RVAL reference and less code to maintain. So although that looks dirty, I suppose it is in a way, it's probably the best solution. And yes, of course, we could have these on different lines. So we, we could do that as well. Uh, that would be perfectly fine to do. It's the same thing. I'll just leave it in line like that. I think it looks a bit neater. Okay, so counter is zero. Let's reboot. Counter is zero. Why is it not printing? I think there's some dodgy thread stuff going on here. Counter is zero. I need a boo boo. Get ESP OK. I'm not actually checking whether that set worked. So let's do let's do this just a bit more verbose since we're getting a, an issue. Uh, setting key to that. So we'll increment it there. So we don't need to increment it there. And then report what the set whether the set had success. 
And then I'm just going to add a 1000 uh, tick delay there. Just so we can see it in the log and it a little bodge just to help any threading issues there. It was executing this branch because we got counter colon and then the number. But my suspicion is that failed. And here we go. Aha. Right, so getting key counts, ASP, okay, counter is currently equal to one. Setting key to two. So now if I hit reboot, got two, now three. What if I pull the power? There we go. So hopefully you can see there that I've, I've literally just, it's on a USB hub so I can uh, just turn the port off altogether. If I turn that port back on, I've never actually done this on the fly before. Might have to switch to putty. Oh, no shit, it'll go to four now. There we go, counter is four. So, completely pulled the power on it and Hopefully that's good enough proof for you guys. Um, let's see, I've got my webcam set up. No, I haven't. Um, but you can see it's rebooting because we're getting the whole bootloader come back up. It's five, it's now six. And if I, oh my good days, I'm very sorry about that. Uh, so now if I kill the terminal, let's do this in putty. Uh, so what were we on just because putty I think might be a bit nicer here can I zoom in on that yeah no I can't not easily so counter was six it's now seven if I actually unplug the ESP completely there you go error reading from serial device uh, and it's inactive if I plug that back in and very quickly restart the terminal. So plugging back in, reset terminal. No, no, it was too quick. Why is it not liking that? I just broken windows. Wouldn't surprise me. Com six, it was. There we are, eight and now nine. Uh, so we can see that that is incremented. We had a couple of extra reboots there, um, but that is doing everything it should be doing. And uh, all the while, the Wi-Fi is in the background. So we've done a string, we've done an integer. So that proves that the the template's working. Uh, also proves that. All of our uh, methods that we've implemented are working as well. So buffers and single uh, objects. Um, we could go ahead and test this with classes and structs and all that sort of thing. Um, we're not going to do that now. We'll do it if we ever need it, just because there's a there's an oddity in that um, to do with padding. Uh, which we'll discuss later down the line if we need it. But there we go. So test is working. So the next uh, thing we'll do, uh, so video, what will that be? Video 13. Um, I'll leave this code in and push it up, but it will be deleted at the start of video 13. Um, 
we'll actually implement this properly into the Wi-Fi um, so that our, where is it, on the top of our Wi-Fi class, um, these default values aren't actually static const chars. Um, they'll be, or const experts should I say, uh, they'll be read from non-volatile at the start. So we'll replace this test code we did with the counter, where's it gone, uh, here. And rather than reading some random key that we're just doing for test purposes, we'll read the SSID and password. If it's there, then we'll use that. If it's not, then we'll leave that open as to how we're going to set it and we'll have a fallback, probably leave this in as a fallback. Um, and then following that, we can then implement the smart config stuff. And then when we get the actual SSID and password from the smart config API, we can then write that back to the non-volatile, use that connect to Wi-Fi, do a reboot. And then when it reboots, it'll look at the NVS and it'll get what we last wrote. So hope you found that interesting. Usual thing, like, subscribe if you want to, blah, blah, blah. See you soon.